Hey guys, how are we doing? We're back in our art session today, carrying on with our art sessions as normal. So today we're going to be looking at a couple of different artists. We're going to be looking at the work of Keith Haring. So I'm going to bring you up some stuff here. We're going to be playing some games. We're going to be doing some interactive arts activities. Here you can see a pattern made by the artist Keith Haring. This is called political line art. And it looks like it's made up of what could be dancing people or weird shapes. That's definitely what Keith Haring was known for. Keith Haring was a important artist in the 1980s in America because he made political art, something we've spoken about a little bit in street art and graffiti before. When we looked at SNCC in the last session, it was more about aesthetics and eye-turning art. Keith Haring was more interested in uh, creating work that had a message and often his message was about the HIV and AIDS epidemic. If you were to search Keith Haring in Google you will find loads of images. Some of these you might recognize already. So let's just have a quick look. Often Keith Haring used images of people moving some of these images are instantly recognisable. The DJ in this corner down here is loads of fun. And again, it's sort of a representation of a dog. But he also made work that was relating back to issues in society. This one, ignorance, fear, silence equals death, is a bit of a play on words of the see no evil, hear no evil, say no evil. Uh, statement that's common in our society and I think it was about looking at how people were ignoring bad things going on in their communities. Keith Haring definitely was a street artist. Here you can see him in one of his rooms that he completely painted and these are pretty spectacular spaces. He painted on the subway a lot and left a lot of political messages. A lot of his stuff was based around uh, simple forms and patterns. Keith Haring was inspired by another artist called Kandinsky, and I'm just going to put that in. Kandinsky, spelled K-A-N-D-I-N-S-K-Y. Kandinsky also made art based on weird shapes and weird forms. Very different to Keith Haring but ultimately was an inspiration for Keith Haring. He liked to paint things that weren't real, that weren't natural and Keith Haring definitely took a lot of influence from that. They look quite simple. They're often built and structured in a strange way. Both of these artists have a big influence on how graffiti artists go about their work in the modern day. Okay, so your first task. What I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to go to Google. Okay. And in Google, I'm going to get you to go to a new website, one we've not used so far, but is a great resource for art games. Okay, so if you're a gamer, this could be a lot of fun to fill some of the time that you've got. Okay, so we're typing in Artsology. Okay. Artsology is spelled... A R T S O L O G Y. Okay, so make sure you spell it right. Artsology, it should come up at the top, is a website for young people full of games based around art. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Okay, when you get inside the website, you will find that there are pages and pages of art games. Okay. All of these games, there are seven pages, are based around artists. On page three, you'll find Keith Haring Pinball. Have a go. It's made up of Keith Haring based images. So you've had a, probably had a few goes on that. It's quite good. Again, what I'm going to say to you is there are loads of other arts activities you can do on here. So if you feel like you want to try something new, you've got a bit bored of Call of Duty or... FIFA or whatever it is you're playing at the moment, Red Dead Redemption or 
Fortnite or whatever it is you're playing, have a look on Artsology. There's loads of art games. Okay, so your next task is I want you to get yourself back onto Google. Okay, and I want you to go back to our standard resource, which is Tate Kids. All right, in Tate Kids, when it comes up, as always, games and quizzes. Games and quizzes is going to open up. All right, and you'll see that there's loads of different stuff. Hopefully, you've had a go on a few of these now. We're in the blue section and we're looking for the game Swingling. Swingling is a game you can see because it has the red dot with the little control pad in it. And this is based on the work of Kandinsky. Okay, so you've had a look at, had a little play on the pinball with Keith Herring and his funny dancing brightly coloured shapes. Now I want you to have a go on Swingling. Create some Kandinsky based artwork. Notice that he uses just shapes to create patterns. Triangles, circles, ovals, ellipses, squares and straight lines. Have a go on that. It's quite fun. Kandinsky's work is definitely interesting. So I'm going to ask you to scroll back up towards the top of the page now. And in the blue section at the very top, we've got a thing called Tate Paint. Right, this is your practical task, the thing I'd like to see you produce, okay? So you've looked at Keith Heron and his bright, strange images of people dancing with slightly political messages. And you've looked at Kandinsky with his unusual, surreal art based on shapes. First of all, I would like you to have a go at creating a Kandinsky piece of work using Tate Paint. Okay? This is a great little resource and can be used for loads of different kinds of painting. It, follow the instructions. Using one shape to start with, I want you to start to create and build a pattern. You could, for example, use a circle. How can you create a recurring pattern with a circle? Once you've done that, I want you to take a screenshot and as always, get it on your Instagram, at babypeopleuk, or hashtag babypeopleuk, and show me what you've done. Okay, so a circle's pretty easy, and to Kandinsky used various different forms and shapes to create his work. I'm going to ask you to use as many different style shapes as you can. And what I want you to do is, using those shapes only, I want you to... Create a picture using Tate Paint of your television. Now, remember, Kandinsky never made anything look like it really did. Be creative. How can you make an image of a television using only shapes like circles, triangles, squares and straight lines? What influence can you take from the things you can see. Maybe you could represent the light shining on the television or the image of what is on the television at the time. But remember, it doesn't necessarily need to look exactly like your TV. Kandinsky's paintings of his friends and of landscapes never looked exactly like they were. They were slightly surreal. Surreal meaning they didn't really make any sense. Once you've created your painting of a television using Tate Paint, screenshot it, same as always. Get it onto the Baby People Instagram by adding it at Baby People UK or hashtag Baby, UK, Baby People UK and I'll be able to see it. I'm looking forward to seeing your strange interpretations of that. Why not try doing one of a pet or a family member or a carer? Create them in a weird Kandinsky way. How can you represent them by only using shapes? Remember, sometimes strange is good. Not all art needs to be perfectly as you see it. Okay, on to another task. Keith Herring created big, bold patterns. Okay, big, bold patterns. Let's just have a quick reminder of Keith Herring. So... If you want to, you can search Keith Haring. He will come up. H-A-R-I-N-G and Keith. Okay, let's just have a quick look at images. Let's see what comes up. There's so many different kinds of patterns and textures. OK, 
okay? What I want you to do is create me using Tate Paint, the program we were just on, okay, a pattern, a Keith Herring pattern. Here you can see one made entirely out of people. It's pretty cool. Add some colour to it. Keith Herring was a big fan of using bright colours, a little bit like Andy Warhol. And interestingly, they were mates. They did hang out. And you can definitely see the influence on each other. Your task is to create a Keith Herring pattern, like the ones we're looking at here. Here he's got some babies, some people dancing, some people holding a heart, some dogs. In this one, he has a strange dog made up of a pattern of people and dogs. Screenshot your images. Add them to Baby People UK or hashtag Baby People UK using your Instagram. Why are we looking at Keith Herring? Keith Herring often had a message in his art. Maybe you could make a message in your art. What would be an important message you'd want to give to the public? Keith Herring often involved imagery that talked about stopping the AIDS epidemic and HIV in America and across the world. Here's an example you can see from Germany and Vienna. What message would you like to give? Your very final task is to create me a Keith Herring political image about something that you think is important. Ideas could be anti-racism, anti-homophobia, women's rights, the HIV and AIDS epidemic, or other medical-based issues. Inside your image, I want to have some words written. This one is about drugs. <laughs> says crack is whack and it was produced in 1986 in New York and as you can see there's loads of stuff in the Keith Herring image there to take on board. It's really important that in this final piece of work you put across a political idea, something that you think is important for people to know. Have fun with this, don't just do one version, try a few. Tate Paint will give you loads of different textures and things that you can use to create an interesting piece of artwork. Research Keith Herring. Look at what he's done. See if any of those inspire you. Please take screenshots, if you can, of your work and add it to Baby People UK or hashtag Baby People UK through your Instagram. I am going to be looking and checking everyone's work. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody again, having a conversation. Remember, a political statement in art can have a big impact. Keith Herring became very famous for that. All right, remember, hashtag your stuff to us, at your stuff to us, and I'll be catching you up really soon. Cheers.